This will be a short video about damping and IRFFB. I've always been strongly against damping, friction and inertia, but I've changed my mind a tiny bit on it lately. Especially with certain car and track combinations in iRacing with the default 60 Hz uh, force feedback. It's, it's way too aggressive and jumpy on curbs and, and even bumps with some cars. It really pulls the wheel way too much and it's too harsh. Especially on the Notch Life also with GT3 cars. It, it makes the wheel move so much, it's so unstable. It's a bit over, overdone and unrealistic. But yeah, that's mainly the 60 hertz signal. The best way to work around it so far is use Arpen 5. So far that's the only uh, reconstruction filter that's really made for 60 hertz. And it's also the amount you need. Lower settings make it uh, more jumpy and uh, aggressive. This is really the amount of smoothing you need in my opinion. And uh, I've tried a lot of uh, damping friction and inertia settings, but I've come to this uh, this conclusion. 1% damping, that should be enough. And 0.25% uh, friction to give the wheel a bit more resistance. This gives a more natural feel and more drivability, especially if you do uh, longer races on tracks with lots of uh, bumps and stuff or cars that are really stiff. Yeah, that should help a lot. I would advise to try these settings. Another thing I would advise you to at least try is download IRFFB. I will put the link in the video description. It's this program. You sh should start your wheel first and then select your wheel here. Put the force feedback on 360 hertz and then it will use uh, the 360 hertz uh, yeah, physics, telemetry. Uh, from the game and not the direct uh, X60 uh, Hz eye racing feedback so you'll so you will get a lot more details and the force feedback will be a lot smoother also curves will be a lot smoother it's a la like you drive uh, on curves which are rounded instead of square it's a really a big difference and also the road texture you feel a lot more uh, of it uh, the settings you want to use uh, yeah, here you can select just like an eye racing the force feedback strength it works the same way as in high racing. Uh, don't use min force uh, with direct drive wheels. If you want, you can uh, boost some suspension effects, but I won't advise that. But you can play with it. Uh, you can even let the program save settings for each uh, specific car. You have reduced force feedback when parked. Uh, yeah, and you can let it start when your PC starts up. And yeah, if you don't want to use it anymore, you just close the program and don't use it anymore. But I really advise to at least try it. You don't have to install VJoy. It's not uh, you don't have to have it. Uh, it's only for the direct uh, filtered stuff. But yeah, that's not really needed. Just try the program out and and try the 360 hertz with iRacing. It should be a huge improvement. And I would like to hear from you guys in the comments uh, what you think about IRFFV. If I'm correct, it should be integrated into the Simicube firmware in the future. So it will have even less latency than it does now. It's, it adds a tiny bit of latency, but it's not a problem. And here's one more little side note. Uh, you just start the program before you start iRacing. You could even start it after you started iRacing, uh, but when you close this down, uh, you lose the force feedback in iRacing. Uh, if you want the old force feedback back, uh, just close the game and restart iRacing and it's all back to normal. Nothing has changed, it's just a separate program that overrides the force feedback. That's how it works, so it's easy to just try it out and then get rid of it if you don't like it. Thank you for watching and bye bye.